सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली In this edition of Global Print dear viewer I'm going to talk to you about how Bollywood could well become the arm of India's soft power of its diplomacy and this week of course there's nothing else to talk about but the, but you guessed it Pathan the blockbuster hit that has amassed more than 500 crores in the last few days since it was released Shah Rukh Khan is back the uh, the pot boiler has uh, never been as exciting as it has as it is this week and while this film uh, is a lot about the return of the indian muslim in fact my editor shekhar gupta has written a piece about that which you must read and various other columnists in the print like veer sangvi has have also talked about the importance of this movie why it is so popular and why it resonates with the indian audience mine is a quite a different take on this movie but before i go there and tell you about what my take is and what the foreign policy connection or india's dipl- diplomatic connection is with patan i'd like to make an appeal to you dear viewer i hope you will subscribe to the print pay rupees 159 only it's very little money but you do get special privileges that non subscribers don't have uh, both privileges and benefits may i add so watch this space Uh, do become a subscriber pay that little sum of money and become a part of the prince very exciting journalism so now back to my column global print on the prince website uh, where i talk about the uh, the diplomatic overtone overtones of patan and let me tell you why i think this is such an important film first of all it's also an afpak film and by afpak of course you know what i mean it's it's the abbreviation for afghanistan pakistan uh, two countries joined at the hip on india's western frontier now this is a phrase that has been very much part of the diplomatic lexicon for the last several decades um for the last 20 years of course as you know in 2001 the americans intervened threw the taliban out and 21 years later one and a half years ago on the 15th of august of 2021 the taliban have come back so afpak remains very much part of patan of the films um ever shall we say the, the it it unfolds across this landscape and let me explain to you why so the opening sentence or the opening scene for example is for example about this pakistani general the uh, this isi guy uh, isi as you know is pakistan's external intelligence agency who is told that he has only a few years to live because he has cancer and his last you know his sort of dream his his wish his dying wish is to hoist the pakistani flag on kashmir so then he sort of issues all these instructions i won't give the plot away but for the next two and a half hours we see how this film unfolds across afghanistan pakistan for example the the name of the movie pathan it's about how a young sharukh khan um saves this afghan village presumably in southern afghanistan where most of the population is of pashtun or pathan ethnicity and uh, so young sharuk saves this village from a missile strike and in gratitude they become he becomes part of their sort of community of their family and in gratitude this elderly woman of the village calls him pathan so then that name sticks um you have so you have this isi general who's a clearly a bad guy you have this isi agent very attractive woman called rubai mohsin uh, she is dipika padukone uh, plays the the role in the film and this very sort of long legged isi beauty uh, which is quite uh, interesting because what it shows to you is that bollywood in one way or the other over the last several decades has been fascinated by india's neighbor next door pakistan and you wonder why and the answer is really actually quite simple it's the people of india and pakistan especially of north india and 
large parts of Pakistan, especially Punjab, which still share a lot of uh, cultural and social and religious affiliations. And here is the point that I'm trying to make and which none other than External Affairs Minister S. Jay Shankar made only a few days ago when the Marathi version of his book, The India Way, was launched uh, in Maharashtra. And he said, uh, and he was asked, of course, about, about India's neighbors. And uh, uh, I'd like to also point out here that that Mr. Jay Shankar has been traveling across other parts of South Asia in India's neighborhood. Only over the, le- over the last fortnight, he was in the Maldives. Then he went to Sri Lanka. Uh, I will talk to you a little bit about this. Uh, I will talk to you about this a little bit later in this video. But in, at this book launch, Mr. Jay Shankar is asked about his neighbors. And of course, he's asked about Pakistan, this very bitter and hostile neighbor with which India shares, or shall I amend that statement by saying, uh, a neighbor with which India shares a very bitter and hostile relationship. So uh, Mr. Jay Shankar says, well, and, and this is a phrase that has, still, that has since become quite popular. And he says, you know, in the, in the, in the Mahabharat, the Pandavas cannot choose their relatives. He's referring to the Kauravas. So the Pandavas are the good guys. They fight the war, the Mahabharata war with the Kauravs. They win the war at huge cost, of course. And just like the Pandavas who couldn't choose their relatives, Mr. Jayashankar says, India cannot choose its neighbors. And he's absolutely 100% right. This is the subcontinent we've inherited. Pakistan, this neighbor uh, on India's western border, is not somewhere in the Pacific Ocean or somewhere deep in the Antarctica or in the Arctic. It's right there on your western border. So what do you do with Pakistan? How do you deal with it? Governments over the last several decades, ever since partition in 1947, actually have grappled with this idea. Atal Bihari Vajpayee came closest to resolving it. And Manmohan Singh picked up that thread uh, when he was prime minister in 2007, when there was a a backdoor uh, channel opened and, and a deal on Kashmir was almost resolved and then other things happened. So the point that Mr. Jayashankar makes, which is that India cannot choose its neighbors, is a point that is very well taken. And you wonder if the Modi government is expanding on this point, even as it leads the way uh, into the future as the leader of the G20. Now, you can be cynical and say that because India is the leader of the G20, that's why uh, it is making all these efforts at Um, normalizing or attempting to normalize at least its relationship with Pakistan, the invitation to Bilawal Bhutto Zardari, Pakistan's foreign minister, to the uh, meeting of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization in Goa in May. Subsequently, there there will be an SCO summit as well to which uh, Shahbaz Sharif, if he's still prime minister, uh, will uh, most likely attend the summit of uh, of the G20 will take place in in September, and you cannot have the heads of government of the world, of the most powerful economies in the world, congregating in New Delhi, and then India having this terrible relationship with a country in its in its own region. That simply doesn't work. So if you want to be the leader of your region, you better resolve the problems that you have with your, um, with your very hostile neighbors. You have to find a way out. It's not very clear, though, what part the Indian government or what the, what part the Modi government wants to take with uh, with Pakistan. So there is this invitation to Bilawal Bhutto Zadari, but at the same time, India has also uh, written to the World Bank to say that it wants to modify the 1960 Indus Waters Treaty between India and Pakistan. Now, this treaty has really stood the test of time. It's 63 years old. Uh, it is uh, it is a treaty that basically talks about sharing the waters of the Indus uh, Basin. So you have the five rivers of the Indus, the Satluj, the Ravi, the Bias, the Chenab, and the Jhelum. Now, the 1960 Indus Waters Treaty uh, gave three of the western rivers to Pakistan and the eastern rivers to India. But in the, over the last four or five years, Um, Pakistan has complained and said that India is building dams on its rivers, on its eastern rivers. And as the lower riparian, India's 
the this dam building on the Indian rivers is um, is having an impact on the water that's flowing down to Pakistan. Now, according to international law, as you know, dear viewer, the upper riparian state, in this case, India, cannot stop the, the flowing waters of the river. It has to let it flow. So you can build a, a dam, but it must be a check dam, which basically means that you use the water. So it's called the run of the river. So you use the water in the river that that is available to, available to you, but you cannot block the waters of the river. So you cannot make a dam uh, which makes a barrage, for example, a pond that accumulates water, which you then use uh, in your own dry season. So what Pakistan is arguing is that it's unable to get the waters of the rivers of the Indus Basin as the lower riparian because India is building these dams and that's a violation of the treaty. And India is saying, India is demanding a neutral expert and is saying that it's done no such thing, no such violation, and that uh, it needs to build these dams to develop uh, its own country and to improve the lives of its people. Now, there is clearly some sort of a, a problem there. But now India has taken this one step further and it wants to modify the Indus Waters Treaty. Now, this is very serious business. Because here is a treaty that has that has stood despite the 65 war within between India and Pakistan, the 1971 war between India and Pakistan, the 1999 Kargil conflict, as well as the the proxy war that the Pakistanis have unleashed for the last several decades. But the Modi government, which believes in a muscular foreign policy uh, and which has implemented such a policy over the last several years, uh, says that this that this Indus Waters Treaty doesn't uh, hold for India any longer, and that it must um, mo it must be modified. So that's the other side of the uh, half full or half empty glass. On the one side, it's invited Bilawal Bhutto. On the other side, who wants to modify the treaty, which will definitely make the relationship much more bitter and acrimonious. So which side of the Modi government do you want? Which face of the Modi government do you want to believe? Both faces are clearly there for you to see and for the world to see. But the point that Patan makes, and which is why I think that External Affairs Minister Jay Shankar, who is perhaps one of India's most brilliant diplomats and certainly one of its most interesting foreign ministers, he understands the region uh, well. He understands he's lived in uh, lived and served in many interesting parts of the globe, including the U.S. and China, um, knows a lot of people. And this is the, the point that he brings uh, to the table. So if India cannot choose its neighbors, what better than to find a way out of the imbroglio uh, that has beset the India-Pakistan relationship? So here is the point that I think Patan makes, which is that uh, you can have the good guys and the bad guys, and they needn't be uh, based according to your nationality. So the Indians are not only good people, or the Pakistanis are not only good people. You have the good and bad uh, in in both sides. So, for example, you have the bad ISI general, but you have the good ISI agent, the very long-legged Deepika Padukone, for example, who starts off by being a bad girl, but then she realizes, oh, listen, her own ISI wants to destroy humanity. So then she switches sides uh, very quickly and very conveniently after a couple of songs and dances. Joins the good guy, Shah Rukh Khan, who's out to save his country and the rest of humanity from the bad Indian man. So this is this sort of this lovely interplay. And, and, here, and here is what. So before uh, Shah Rukh sort of um, says Jai Hind and, uh, you know, is saving the world in an Afghan village, remember. He also recalls the very famous phrase that John F. Kennedy first used uh, 40 years, 50, 60 years ago, which is, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. This is what he says to, to John Abraham, to Jim, before he sort of, you know, throws him down into the valley and, and Jim kills himself. So these phrases from 
other parts of the world that uh, that this Bollywood film has integrated just shows that Indian filmmakers are willing to look globally, willing to integrate the most interesting parts of what they feel uh, that they can pick and choose from the world and integrate it to the to the Indian um, to the Indian perspective or to the Indian way for an Indian audience. And that's exactly what Jay Shankar's book is about. It's called The India Way. So what does India bring to the table? This unique civilization that we have. How do you bring people together? How do you sit across the table and resolve your problems? And remember, this is what, um, I mean, India has striven to, to be the leader of South Asia for many, many years. For every government wants to lead South Asia, Atal Bihari Vajpayee, uh, this is what he tried to do with his bus yatra to Lahore in 1999. That was followed, of course, by the Karate conflict. Manmohan Singh again tried again. Narendra Modi also tried in 2015, and now it seems that he wants to try again. Because when people come together and there is a relationship between peoples and not just between governments, that is what this film shows to you. And I think this is the message that External Affairs Minister, Mr. Jayshankar, should, should uh, understand. And, and I think if he watches the movie Pathan, he will get it. So I will end here now. And I do hope you will read my column, Global Print. And I look forward to your comments uh, on this video. Thank you so much for watching.